When Theo told me they wanted to send me their new Q15 headphone DAC, I said, absolutely. Then I looked on their website and it says it's both a desktop product and portable. That's not good. Portable in my mind are products required by necessity and simply aren't suited for anything else. Well, that's not good. This isn't good. This pool sucks. So I attempted to cancel the FIO Q15 order, but it was too late. Upon further investigation, I was very surprised that the Q15 cost $399. Their K11 is only $129. Even their K7 costs $150 less. Was Fio mad? Who is going to buy a portable DAC amp for $399 when so many good DAC amps exist for your desktop at this price point or less? Well, I'm here to tell you that <laughs> Sorry, that annoying intro lost my train of thought. So let's take a look at the Q15. First and foremost, it has heft because its battery is big and built to last for hours. Using easy to drive IEMs and not using full power, I was getting nearly 10 hours out of it before having to recharge them. Using full size headphones connected to the balanced output using the highest gain setting and it still lasted nearly seven hours for me. The overall look and feel of the Q15 is solid. Normally that's the best thing you can say about a product, but if you want hours and hours of battery life, it also makes it chunky. Great for a desktop product, but not so great to fit into my fanny pack. And also not so great weighing down one side of my shorts. It's definitely portable, but would I take it on a jog? Would anyone? The display is very nice, letting you know what input you're on. And there are three, USB, coax, and Bluetooth, as well as the sample rate, volume, and gain. And then there are the settings, of which there are so many, I'm not gonna bore you with all of them. A quick look includes the length of time before the display turns off, which input to use, the ability to use one, or both the headphone outputs as a pre-out for your external speakers on your desktop, PEQ, which can only be set on your phone using the FIO app, but can then be used while on your desktop. And maybe most importantly, the ability to change the orientation of the display. Interface-wise, it's simple, well thought out and elegant. However, it's the ability to be both portable and a desktop unit that adds a level of confusion. There's a switch called phone mode that will suck the battery out of your phone if you keep it set to on. Keep it off and the Q15 will use its own internal battery power. You're thinking simple, not confusing, but you have to be using the correct USB input for your little scenario to work because FIO confusingly uses two USB inputs and both are capable of charging the Q15. Yes, both USBs can be used to charge the battery. Sure, you're thinking, well, that makes it even simpler. It doesn't matter which one is used, you're thinking, you're also thinking scientific audiophile, you're an idiot. And while that thought of yours may be true, I know my mom and dad agree with you. Let me continue my thought process. If you want to use the Q15 with your phone, you are best off using the USB port marked USB, but it won't ever charge the Q15, even if it's plugged into a charger. Turning off phone mode simply says to the FIO, use the internal battery. To get that port, that center port to charge, you also have to turn desktop mode to off. Sure, if this was only going to be used as a portable DAC, you would always keep desktop mode off and always get a charger whenever switching off phone mode. But this is supposed to be a dual use product. So we're starting to see the complications of making that work and having versatility. Now, if you use the power in USB marked connection, that will chain charge whenever desktop mode is set to off. But if you get used to using only that port, you will need to switch to the other USB port if you ever want to use your phone's battery. None of this is that bad if you're taking a 12 hour flight to New Zealand because you'll be sitting in a comfortable first class seat and have the time to figure it all out. But what if you're taking a 12 hour mountain hike? Do you really want to be fumbling for switches? 
when there was a 15,000 foot cliff two inches to your left? What I would have liked to see is a sensor that detects how much voltage is coming in. I don't know a single phone that will output more than five volts. So if a sensor was added to do two things, one, if it senses say 10 volts or more, automatically stay in charging mode. And two, if the battery capacity drops below 5% to automatically switch to pulling power from the phone, assuming phone mode was on, that would be cool. Getting back to the unit, before listening tests begin, my biggest issue using this is as a desktop product. The problem is the placement of both of the outputs are on one side of the product. If I could plug my speakers into the rear and my headphones into the front while at my desk, that would work perfectly for me. But with both jacks on just the front side, it gets a little bit cumbersome running all the wires. And cumbersome is another word for compromise. And compromise is another word for portable. And portable is another word for... Because Bluetooth is only an input, and not an output. Even having Bluetooth desktop speakers doesn't solve the wire problem on your desk. The best use of Bluetooth will probably be eliminating the wire from your phone to the Q15. After 250 hours of pink noise, my 600 hours of Bish revealed that the compromise of the Q15's desktop slash portable design really bothered me because this sounds absolutely unquestionably remarkable. FIO decided to use the AKM AK4191 EQ plus the AK4499 EX combo. These are literally some of the finest chips you can imagine. Add PEQ via FIO's mobile app that can't be set using your Mac or PC, but can be used on your Mac or PC after you use set it on your phone. And you've got a reference quality DAC that can accommodate any headphone or IEM you own. I can go on and on about how bass was deep, and it was, and extended, and it was, and blather on about everything else, but that is just a waste of time. The Q15 is a reference level DAC. However, where a few of you may run into trouble, and I mean a few, not a lot, is that while the Q15 can produce 1600 milliwatts, it can only do that in super high gain mode. The Q15 has four gain modes, low, medium, high, and super high. I heard a bit of compression in super high gain mode. I did not hear any compression artifacts in lower medium gain and had to strain very hard to hear any compression in high gain mode. But obviously you aren't getting 1600 milliwatts in the lower gain modes. The Q15 is literally a reference quality DAC amp. At $399, it's on the pricey side, but you get portability with power that your phone couldn't dare dream of. But it's not portable power to take on a walk or a jog because it's a rather heavy portable unit. It's more of a travel portable, something you would take on a vacation, a weekend getaway, or when your better half kicks you out of the house for something you're not aware you did or said wrong. For me, it just isn't set up well for desktop use because of the two jacks being on the same side. So we're giving the Q15 a red blend rating, and not just any red blend, but a premium travel Copa Davino red blend, the wine sold in a travel glass, but more than capable of being served at your dinner table. And we're going to pair it with a beef pasta marinara, but not just any beef pasta marinara, a freeze dried beef pasta marinara, so you can serve it at home or on the road. It's a compromise. If you need a reference level travel DAC amp that for sound quality is literally uncompromised with all but the hardest to drive headphones, the FIO Q15 is stunningly good. Maybe you're a gamer who goes to your friend's place a lot and you want to simply grab a DAC quickly and go. This is for you. If you need something once in a while for traveling, for business or pleasure and can work the physical layout well into your desktop setup, then go for it. It is reference quality through and through. But like all things trying to be everything, there are compromises in the design. If you can live with those compromises, this isn't going to disappoint you on sound quality. So while the Q15 is not for me, it may very well be for you. And I do recommend it wholeheartedly. 
Thank you for watching this episode of The Scientific Audiophile. Remember to subscribe to be notified when next video drops and remember to become a member if you want early access to some videos and also member-only videos. Thank you and have a great day.